Welcome to my second video on the Xtool F1 Galvo laser engraver. Today we're going to take a closer look at how to engrave and what is actually happening with anodized aluminum in both blue and IR radiation. For this I marked a couple of test fields, just the letter T with different power settings but also different speed settings both in blue and IR light. Here you can see the result. To look a little bit deeper, I put the lasered surfaces into our scanning electron microscope. Scanning electron microscope basically is a much higher magnification microscope than your normal stereo or digital microscope you know. Something that immediately is visible is that in the lasered region of the T we have some cracking. Here I'm zooming in and then focusing and repeating this step a couple of times. Um, something you can see is that although the cracks are quite deep, they are not completely up until the aluminum. I think this might be because it's getting very warm while lasering um, and the alumina oxide has a different thermal expansion coefficient than the aluminum substrate. Here I'm changing to a sensor which allows for a better topographic, so 3D representation of the sample. This is closer to how this would look in a light microscope. A nice thing on the scanning electron microscope is that by averaging a couple of frames you get a much higher quality picture. Take a look at my Instagram, I will be uploading a lot of the pictures in high resolution there, um, so you can check them out in detail. Now on the ER side we actually have no cracking but instead we have some deeper laser ablation. Um, you can see some holes and I'm guessing because at the end this is probably where you have a little bit more dwell time because of the Galvo scanner changing direction there. Now I'm a little bit interested in how the structure looks and you can actually see not only laser ablation in the form of holes but also recrystallization and even some little bit melted areas there. So the material must have been getting a lot hotter in the IR radiation which points towards more absorption of the energy. Now here what you can see is actually a quicker scanning speed which I don't think changed a lot in the visible so blue radiation picture. But if we go over to the IR side you can see at a quicker scanning speed, this is five times quicker, 10 millimeters per second instead of two millimeters per second, the whole ablation damage only exists on the left side. This is where the Galvo has to change direction. So the Galvo was scanning from left to right in all of these T's. Now I'm just taking a closer look at every T of the parameter study and the first T's we looked at they were 10 passes and this was a really bright white. Um, now this is only with five passes. I think you get a little bit less cracking here. Um, the connected fields are a little bit smaller which makes sense because you're putting less heat into it. But overall the appearance is very similar to 10 passes. You can see the cracks there in the single digit micron range and the fields between the cracks they are like 70 by 100 micrometers wide. Now on the IR radiation part you can see that with less passes um, the ablation damage holes once again reduce even at low speed and they also get smaller in diameter. They are about 35 micrometers in diameter and you can see our T is actually right on spot in size. Next we are taking a look at the scored, so not engraved, but scored settings. You can see that the laser left a much deeper impression here and between the two lines of tracking this letter M there is a little ridge left over. But overall I would say this looks really good, so scoring actually uh, leaves fantastic quality here. I was wondering about the mechanism of removing the color because I mean it's not a plating enough material um, to really make a white color appear. For this I did EDS analysis and I did first a line scan. 
You can see on the left side of the line scan that we have some carbon content, which probably is the pigment used to color it. And on the right side, we don't really have a lot. And this is true for both the IR radiation and the blue radiation. Doing a small area scan to reduce the amount of noise, we can see that the carbon content is nearly 10% with a lot higher sulfuric content on the non-lasered part, whereas in the lasered part, we have nearly no carbon at a much reduced sulfur content. I think this points very much toward um, the pigment disappearing first, but also you're removing the uppermost layer of the alumina oxide. In order to get some more information about the surface topography, I did some confocal microscopy on our sample. With confocal microscopy, you get a very good resolution in the Z direction, which enables you to see even minuscule differences in height. And after loading the model and changing a little bit of the 3D display, mainly the amplification of the z-axis, you can actually see that the laser removed some material. To me, this was quite surprising because if you scratch the surface with your fingernail, you're not feeling any height difference at all. It feels completely smooth. Um, but we can see here that it actually removed something. Now, one question here, which I would ask myself is, is the surface roughness different between the ablated area and the non-ablated area. Now, the test signs I did, they are kind of not really large enough to allow for a proper line surface roughness measurement. But since 2012, we've had an ISO standard with aerial surface measurements, and I did record enough data for this. So what I'm doing here is extracting two areas, one inside the ablated area and one outside of the ablated area. And then we are doing ISO measurements um, for both of them. The ablated area with blue radiation has an SA of 1.45 micrometers, whereas the undamaged area has an SA between 0 0.9 and 1 micrometer. Now here you can see the IR radiation surface. And we can see that because of the much deeper pitting, our SA is also a lot rougher. We have an SA of 3.2 micrometers. Now compared to the usual milled surface roughness, this looks like a horrendously high value, but remember this is anodized surfaces which are much rougher by nature. Now, one thing that interested me was how much material was the laser removing. And for this, I put two least square planes here and looked at the height difference. And we actually removed about 5.8 micrometers. So that's it for the video. Um, to sum up, color change through particle removal of the pigment. And it is actually, which is to me quite surprising, removing some of the alumina oxide through ablation. Thanks for watching and see you next time.